All right, welcome back to Monday Morning Haskell video blog. We're exploring uh, some of the advent of code problems from 2021. Today, I'm doing a video walkthrough of day 16. Uh, and this is essentially a uh, binary processing uh, problem. We get uh, what our puzzle input looks like. It's actually very simple. We just have this hexadecimal number. So we have, uh, you know, <laughs> there's not much else to it than that. Uh, we have a very large instance uh, for, for a big example, for a small example, you know, we have, a, there, there are a number of different examples uh, on the page, but this is one that I sort of chose to be the example. And so what are we doing with this hexadecimal number? First, we're gonna convert it to binary. Uh, so obviously each hex digit corresponds to four bits for uh, binary, uh, you know, <laughs> four bits, that the, that's what the word is. And we're going to treat this essentially like a network packets. Network packets have kind of a uh, similar sort of structure to this where, um, you know, the first three bits of our packet uh, contain like a version number. And then the next three bits are sort of, a, you know, a type ID. They tell us, okay, is this packet just a single packet with a, you know, one value, a literal value? That's sort of our base case. Uh, but then there are other cases uh, where a packet can be an operator and it can contain multiple sub packets. Uh, so, uh, for ex and the, 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 there are two uh, ways that this can happen depending on the seventh bit that we would parse in the packet after the six bit header. Uh, so, uh, if it's zero, then we get the length in bits of how many sub packets are contained. If it's one, uh, then we get a number of sub packets. So, there, there are a lot of different layers of this. But ultimately, it's a recursive problem. And what we're actually going to do this time uh, is we're going to use megaparsec to really solve the problem itself, uh, or really rather to parse uh, our information into uh, a packet type. And once we have a packet, the problems that we have to solve with this packet actually aren't really all that complicated. Uh, so the first thing we have to do, we have to get the sum of all the version numbers uh, in these packets. So a fairly easy question to answer. Uh, and then the second question we'll have to answer, um, we'll actually have to evaluate each of the different packets and determine, okay, what is the value, the total value applying all the operations in the packet. All right, so let's get started with the code. Uh, there are actually quite a few utilities that we're going to want to use for this problem, uh, just because you know we're doing a binary problem and th there are a lot of interesting things we can do with binary numbers, especially when we are uh, parsing them. Uh, so first we just wanted to find a bit type, it's zero or one, not much else to it uh, than that. But what we want to do is we want to be able to take hexadecimal characters and turn them into a list of bits. So each one of these is uh, four, hexadecimal means it has four bits in it, and this is all just hard-coded, this is how hexadecimal works. If we have uh, zero, then we'll get uh, four zeros, uh, that's a representation. If, we, if it's a one, then the least significant bit becomes uh, a one. Uh, and then we go all the way up to F, the final hexadecimal character, that's just one, 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 equal to the number 15 in decimal. And speaking of decimal, we also need to be able to convert uh, a list of bits into uh, a value, into a numeric value, a decimal value. So we'll use different sizes depending on how many bits we have some of the numbers that we'll be working with are on the small side, so we can use word eight. Um, so we'll write this function bits to decimal eight. Um, and processing this list of bits, we can just do this in a uh, tail recursive way where we just uh, ha have an accumulated value and we just keep, you know, having uh, the multiplier and we, you know, double that each time and process the bit and so on. Uh, so these functions are pretty straightforward. We, we do this for size 8, size 64. We can also do this for just integer for an unbounded uh, int value, uh, but we won't actually use that in this uh, particular problem. But that's all the utilities we're going to have. Let's go to uh, the day 16 problem. Uh, again, this starts out fairly easy. We won't spend any time on parsing the file. We just, you know, parse uh, a hexadecimal line, and so we get uh, our line of hexadecimal characters, but now uh, we have to start doing something with that. And what are we going to do with the accessible characters? Obviously, we want to create a list of bits from this, so that'll be our first step. Let's uh, just go ahead and start with that. So let's just go ahead 
and start with that. So let's say a result. Um, uh, we use run maybe t just because some some of these operations can fail. I didn't do this in the most ideal way with uh, run maybe t, but um, so we can get the line of bits mfm. So we're parsing these hexadecimal characters. And this, so I believe now we're getting, so this is our list of bits. And now we'll, what do we want to do with these bits? We want to actually uh, parse them into a packet. And what is a packet? So we're gonna share this code uh, between these two functions. What is a hexadecimal packet? Or not even a hexadecimal packet, just a packet overall. What, what is a data structure we can use to represent a packet? So basically there are two cases. We have our base case where it's just a literal, where we'll have the version number and we'll have the value that is stored uh, within that literal. Uh, the other cases we can have an operator. So operator has the version number again, and then it also has this type ID for you know what type the operator is, as well as a list of packets within it. So these are sub packets, it's a, it's a recursive structure. So the main thing we need to do here is write uh, this function that will basically allow us to parse a packet node. And we have this, uh, I, I already wrote this a little wrapper here around uh, parsing the packet node. Uh, so this will just take our list of bits and turn it into a packet node uh, using uh, megaparsec. We'll call run parser t and then everything else basically folds into, um, folds into the parsec monad as we're going to do this. So let's start that parsing process because uh, there are several, several different stages of it. Uh, first, we want to be able to just parse a single bit. Uh, this is actually uh, really easy. Uh, when we have a list of bits or a list of anything, you can get a single one of those just by doing any single uh, very easy. And if we want to parse three bits, and we have to do this for the header and we have to do this for the operator type ID, uh, this is also uh, pretty easy. We just say count three parse bit. And I think uh, because we're turning this into a word eight, into a number uh, that we can use, uh, we'll just use, uh, I think, bits to decimal eight. Map that over it. And so that's how we're going to get uh, our header out. And so now we can start writing uh, our parsing function for the packet node. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get uh, the version, packet version. And another observation about this uh, function for parsing the packet node, we're going to return the number of bits that we parsed in the process of this packet. And we need this because one of our cases says parse this many bits in all of your sub packets. So we need to keep track of that. Uh, we'll see how it works a little bit later. Um, but we'll start right by parsing three bits in order to get the package version. Then we'll get uh, the type ID, another three bits. And now we need to do uh, some branching logic. So if the packet type ID is four, then we have a literal packet. So uh, what do we want to do in that case? We have a then do, and then we have an else. Let's see how to find. So what do we do in this case? Uh, well, what we want to do is we want to parse a literal. We can write a separate function that's going to do that. This will give us a literal value as well as the number of bits that we parse in that literal uh, value. And then we'll just return our base constructor where we have literal, we have the packet version already, uh, and the literal value. And then we need to keep track of the number of bits that we parsed. So we have this literal bits that we parsed in getting the actual value itself. Uh, we have to add six to that because we parsed these six bits before doing anything else. So let's uh, write this function for parsing the literal before we uh, do anything else. And this will be, um, the way this works is there are five bit chunks uh, within our packet. And if the first bit is a zero, that means this is the last of those five bit chunks. If it's a one, that means it's not the last and we have to keep going. And then the remaining four bits just comprise the items that will actually go into uh, our number. So we're gonna do this in a tail recursive fashion. So we'll say parse literal tail, takes a list of bits, and takes an accumulated number of bits that we have parsed so far. So remember, we want to keep track of that. Uh, so this is just going to be our tail function. We're just going to call this uh, with, you know, we've accumulated zero bits that are actually part of our number. 
and initially we haven't parsed any bits. That's how we're starting. Uh, so we have the accumulated number of bits that we parse, and then we have, or, or rather, th these are the bits themselves that are factoring into the number, the final number that we'll return. This is the number of bits that we've parsed. And so what do we do first? We have to parse the leading bit of this chunk. So parse a single bit, uh, and then we have to get the next four bits. So we'll say count four. And so basically whatever, you know, done is we can actually already get uh, our new number of bits, the accumulated number of bits. Uh, it's number bits plus five, so we parsed one, and then parsed another four. So we'll use that later. Uh, but then we can also get uh, our sort of accumulated list of bits. Probably could have named this a little bit better, but we just take our existing bits and we add the next bits that we just parsed, this set of four here. Uh, and now we have to look at that leading bit because this determines what we're going to do next. If the leading bit is equal to zero, then we're done. So we return uh, bits to decimal 64. Uh, and we, we have to call that on all of our accumulated bits. And then we also have to return the number of bits that we parsed. That's our, uh, our base case, our end case. If it's a one, then we have to keep going. We have to return. So we say parse literal tail num bits, and that's all. So that's how we parse a literal. Uh, that's the easy part. Uh, the next part, we have to move on to the other cases, the cases where we have an operator and where we have subpacks. So first, we have to do the length type ID, parse bit. <clears throat> and if that length type is 1, then we're going to do subpackets. So subpackets, number of subpackets, I should say. Both of these are subpackets, but this is the one where we get the number of subpackets, and this is going to be the one where we get the number of bits in the subpackets. So starting with this case, a um, little bit easier in my opinion. So uh, first, we have to count out 11 bits. That's the number it gives us in the problem. And we convert that uh, to just a number so we can get the number of subpackets. Oops, I didn't put the right operator. And uh, then what we have to do is we want to recursively call this function. We want to recursively parse packet node, you know, a certain number of times. And that number is the, the value we just parsed. So we're parsing packet node. That's our recursive call. The number of times we want to do that is from integral number of subpackets. We have to convert that to an int, I think, to use it, to use it with replicate m. That's the function we're using here, ultimately. And this gives us sub packets with lengths. That's what I call that. What's the type of this? This is a list, because remember, we're using replicate m, and it's a list of packet, whoa, something, let me caps off. Packet node and word 64. So here, the packets are combined with their sizes. We actually want to split those up. So we'll say sub packets, like node, and uh, lengths, list of word 64. That's just equal to unzip of sub packets. Because what are, we, what are we going to use these for now? Once we've parsed all of our sub packets, uh, we need to return an operator packet. And again, we use the packet version, we use the packet type ID that we parse all the way back up here. The type ID is very relevant for the operator, it's not as relevant for the literal. Um, and then we need the list of sub packets itself. And finally, we need to you know, sum up all of the bits that we've parsed so that we know uh, that number. And so we want to take sum of sub packets. That's our starting point, but we can't forget the other uh, the, the other values we've parsed. So we have the six bits here, and we have the seventh from the type ID, and then we had 11 uh, to get the number of sub packets. So we have to take the sum of that, and we have to add seven and add 11. We could just do 18, obviously. Um, but uh, that is what we need to do. Um, it's interesting, why is it complaining? Because I think uh, sum of, oh, whoops. <laughs> The, the sum of lengths. That's what we're adding here. Okay, great. So that is the number of sub packets case. Now we need to do the slightly trickier case. And uh, here, 
notice we've already defined function parse for packet length. We'll be calling into that. That's essentially a tail recursive helper. But it's odd because there are different layers of recursion here. So I, I think it actually ends up being mutual recursion, uh, technically speaking. So first of all, we have to do the same thing, except we're going to go uh, this is decimal 64 uh, on 15 bits. Uh, and then we'll say, okay, sub packets. And now, what are we going to do? We're going to parse for a packet length based on this uh, sub packet size. And what are sort of the tail arguments of this? We have the list of packet nodes. This is an accumulated list. Uh, so initially, that's going to end up being empty. We have two other arguments, though. And these are going to be the number of bits that we still have to parse. That's what this integer is. It could potentially be negative, which is why I'm using an int uh, rather than uh, a word. So from integral uh, total sub packet length. And then we want the, the accumulated number of bits that we have parsed. Like technically we could do a sum here, uh, but it's nice to just r record all of it so that we can um, sort of verify everything at the end. And assuming this all works, then we can do, uh, we can again return operator, packet version, packet type ID, sub packets, same thing we did above, and we'll again do size plus seven plus 15. Uh, so 15 being the number we parsed here. Uh, and of course we get the size when we parse for packet length. So now this function, this function is a little tricky and it's a little hard to wrap your mind around. Um, because it's going to be mutual, it's going to be recursive in the sense of calling itself sometimes, and it's also going to be mutually recursive in terms of calling parse packet node. So uh, we'll name our arguments, remaining bits, accumulated bits, the previous packets. I suppose I could say number of remaining bits, and that would be a little more accurate. Both of these are numbers rather than the bits themselves. Um, but first, so we'll say, okay, if remaining bits less than or equal to zero. Well, the if it's greater than zero, obviously we want to parse the packet. Uh, but there's actually two cases here. I think we probably could have done this condition differently, but uh, oh well. So if it's less than zero, that's actually an error case. And I didn't, I didn't propagate all the monads correctly. I kind of uh, punted on giving me a good error message here. We could say something like log error n. Uh, Parse too many bits. I don't think there's m0 here. Uh, so I don't, I don't think that's actually going to work. I'm probably just going to end up changing that to error. Um, otherwise, if it is exactly 0, that's actually a success case. So at this point, we're going to reverse the packets that we've parsed. And we're going to return the number of the accumulated bits. So that's the happy case. Now we need, um, or at least that's the base case. Now we also need our recursive case. So in the recursive case, what do we do? We have to parse a whole packet. And so that means we're going to call this function, parse packet node, because the sub packets will have their own headers. So we have to go through uh, that whole process again. And this is why we need to do all of this work and, and always getting uh, the size of the packets as we parse them. So now we have this value. So now we have new packet and we have its size. And we can make this recursive call. We can say parse for packet length. And what are we going to do? We're going to say remaining bits minus our integral size. Uh, and then we're going to say accumulated bits plus from integral size. What's that necessary? This should be a word 64, and this should be a word 64. This from integral shouldn't be necessary, even though I um, put it in there. But we'll, we'll, we'll see what the compiler has to say about that. And then we, have, we need our new list of packets. So we'll say parse uh, new packet dependent to the previous packets, um, parse packet. Uh, and so can I actually do some analog? Oh, this, yeah, it's, it's doing a weird thing where I have to like lift this error message. Oh, I guess it still compiles, which is weird. I'm not sure. I guess parsec t does have m0 um, or m monad fail. Um, but anyways, so yeah, we, we, we call into this 
thing recursively first, and then we call back into this recursively. A little strange, but we have our base case where we just return the previous packets and all of the bits we've accumulated. And that's basically it. That's how we parse um, a packet node. So um, we still have to answer the question. We still have to you know, say, what are we actually doing with this packet? But so we say packet parse bits uh, bit line. And now we have two functions, one for each uh, each part. We'll have some packet versions. I'll just take a single packet node and give us some of the versions, of course. And we'll just uh, return that result. And we'll do basically the same thing here, uh, except instead of doing this, we're going to do calculate packet value. And that's actually going to be a monadic operation, so we're not going to uh, return it. So let's write these functions, some packet versions. Uh, we've got a nice, neat recursive data structure, so this is actually pretty easy. Um, so we say literal with the version number, just you know, return the version. Now that we're adding these together, we do have to go beyond word, uh, word 8, we have to go into word 64. Uh, so that's our first case. Now we'll get our second case. version here and our packets. So first we have to take, uh, so I split that poorly from integral, we have to take the version from this packet itself and then we have to add that. I pull a plus up here. We have to say, uh, we have to call this recursively some packet versions over each of the sub packets and we have to take the sum of that, uh, some packet versions. And then we add that to this version and we're done. Uh, at this point, uh, I believe we should have two passing tests, or, or um, the easy tests should pass. Um, so let's just go ahead and run tests. Oh, let's go into GHCI and see just what's going wrong here. Might have to isolate some of our messages. Okay, so I think I found a bug here. We have all that harping on uh, using the packet, on counting all the bits right, and I still forgot to add this six right here um, in the code. And you know, an accounting scheme like this is just, it can be very, very difficult to manage. So you really wanna be careful with that. Um, and okay, now these are undefined. It looks like we're getting the right values here in GHCI. Uh, test is not behaving nicely because I, I still have this undefined. I shouldn't affect the first test though. Anyways, uh, now we'll just go ahead and fill in this function, calculate packet value. Uh, so that's a little more complicated, but it's still, it's still fairly easy. We're just mainly doing a case analysis here. And we're saying, okay, if we have a literal packet, and values x, but we just return x, no problem. Uh, but now we have a number of other cases. And um, read the problem details. There are several different operators we can have here. So if we have operator and it's zero, what we do here is we take the sum of all of the sub packets. So obviously we have to um, we have to calculate their packet values. And since this is monadic, we say map m, and we take the sum over that. Um, one is product, two is minimum, three is maximum. So these are all kind of similar. Um, and then the other cases, five, six, seven, are a little more complicated. Uh, so if we have five, what that means is we should expect to get two packets exactly, because we're going to compare these two packets. So we'll say if length of packets is not equal to two, then we need to log an error message. Uh, so this is the greater than operator. Must have two packets. 
and we'll return m0 there. Else, what are we going to do? We'll say uh, let p1, p2 equal two packets. So we'll parse the first, or we get the value for the first packet, calculate packet value. And then, uh, so if v1 is greater than v2, then we return 1 from this, otherwise we return 0. So that's how the greater how greater works. Uh, the other two will work kind of similar. So uh, operator 6 is uh, less than operator. I don't think any other changes are necessary there. And operator 7 is equal. So these packets have to be equal to each other. And I think I have covered all the cases, but it's still, uh, I guess, um, I, I guess theoretically we can have other values. GHE doesn't know that. Um, we'll just say P is it's just an invalid packet. And we do uh, hard and small 54, big. All right, that looks like the correct number that I have in my test here. All right, so probably working. Let me just go ahead and run my test suite. It's been behaved a little weird a second ago. Let's see if it passes. Okay, and all our tests are passing, so we're done with this problem. This is kind of neat. Uh, recursive parsing is definitely a a tricky problem to handle. Uh, and you can see the, the, the accounting scheme of needing to keep track of the number of bits, that, that, that's hard to get right. Um, but uh, we're done with this one, so we'll be back next week. Uh, a new problem uh, coming at you love right up, right up Monday, video walkthrough on Thursday. Uh, make sure to subscribe to Monday Morning Haskell, mmhaskell.com slash subscribe, link is in the description. Uh, you'll get our monthly newsletter and you will uh, also you know, be able to keep up to date and get all of the best uh, deals on our courses. Got some special things coming up uh, later this month, so you won't want to miss that. Uh, thank you so much for watching.